Are you a guitarist that wants more options with your chord strumming than just the same old? You know, that's all right, but perhaps you'd like a little bit more spice. type of thing. So I'm going to show you a bunch of ways to get more out of your chord strumming. Let's get into it. But firstly, why would it matter to you if you see other people around playing with just, you know, similar stock standard strumming pattern? Well, I bet you deep down that you know that the people that are listening are going to prick up their ears a lot more when, you know, there's more on offer in a chord strumming it's really where you get to express yourself more you get to really make music for your information this is me being creative and so how are you going to be able to achieve more chord flavors is by me showing you 10 different tips and tricks but just before i get into them i want you to imagine you know what would life be like if you had a lot more different sounds and flavors coming out of your strumming hand. What would you feel like? All right, let's get into it. Now, just for this example, I'm just going to use these four chords, E minor, C, G, and D, much like the song Zombie by the Cranberries. And of course, everything that I'm going to show you can work for any chord. Wait a minute, did you say anything? Anything. Anything. Yes, anything. All right, here we go. Now, this first tip is actually a pre-tip. It's like a tip before the tips. It's the entree. Soup's on, fat boy. Uh, I'm just going to check my tuning here because, let's face it, no matter what cool tricks I have up my sleeve with playing chords, none of them are going to sound good if I'm out of tune. That's no good. So check your tuning and always check your tuning every single time that you're going to be playing the guitar. Okay, so we're ready for our main tips now. What we're going to do is we're just going to start by focusing on whatever your fretting hand is. Mine is my left hand. And so the first of the tips with the fretting hand is having some different chord variations. So for instance, rather than just open chords, is there any other way that you can play those? You know, so for instance, maybe extending the chords out with say like a minor seven, C add nine, G six, and a D over F sharp. Are you aware of jazz music, the movement of jazz? You could get super jazzy and play an E minor nine, C major seven, G major seven, and whatever this one is. <laughs> and of course you can't forget power chords. Now you could do two things here. You could do a D or a D over F sharp. Now, if you're unfamiliar with a bunch of the different fancy chords with the chord names and whatever, what I'll suggest is you just experiment. So you like with E minor, try taking some fingers off. Kind of still sounds like E minor, I guess. Or try adding some fingers. It's just a really good way of experimenting, finding some different sounds that you didn't know you had access to. Well, it is a night for experimenting. All right, so that's a great segue going into our second main tip here, which is utilizing some techniques, our fretting hand techniques, like for instance, a hammer on, which if you do that with a chord, I just did two fingers there, but it could just be one finger. And then I added in a pull off there as well. And slides is another technique that you can use as well. What I just did there was a little trick I do, which is just sliding up to an octave higher, exactly an octave higher. If you're not too sure what an octave is, an octave is the same note, but just at a higher pitch. Or if you're starting higher, then you could be an octave lower. But yeah, and that can work on any chord within reason. Of 
the other hand. Alrighty, so now we're going to move on to our strumming hand. Now, I usually use a guitar pick, but sometimes I use fingers as well. And if you're somebody that uses only one or the other, then I'll just say, practice both. Because you just never really know what the other can provide until you actually really give it a good go. But you'll never, never know if you never, never go. And I mean more than just for a few seconds before you, you know, go, oh, well, that's something that I'm not used to. I don't like it. I don't like you. <laughs> because, for instance, you know, with a guitar pick, it's really hard to make it sound like... You know, it's just a different sound. And, of course, using fingers can give you some finger-picking opportunities as well. Okay, our fourth tip here is just being really accurate with your strumming hand. So, for instance, starting to strum on the correct string. You know, E minor is fine because you can just strum the whole guitar. It doesn't matter. But, you know, sometimes people might start strumming from the A string, which the first note will be a B. And so this, I don't know if you can tell, it just doesn't quite sound right to me. Then hearing that low E, which is the bass note, the foundation note of the chord E minor. And then a lot of people will be playing a C, which that should be the bass note there, the note C, which is being fretted on the A string, on the third fret there, should sound like that. But then, can you tell? But this unwanted note here, it can sound okay, but if you're not controlling it and you're not aware of the difference, well then it's really important that you become aware. So G's okay, but if you're playing just a normal stock standard D major chord and you're not starting from the D string, then it'll potentially sound like this. Now that doesn't sound too bad. If I was plugged into a PA though, and you're hearing this low E string. You can tell it's, it's just too many notes that aren't supposed to be there. So we want it to sound like that, like that, and like that. And now for tip number five, this is really important that you have some strumming variation. And First things first, if you're only strumming in downstrokes, I don't know if you can tell, it just sounds stiff. Try strumming down and up. And if you're strumming with the exact same strumming pattern for the whole song, well, it's just going to sound monotonous. It will sound really solid, I'll give it that. But, you know, give it some variation, give it some life. So, for instance, you know, it could be... Yes, potentially that might sound a little bit too busy. But the point is, is that it's great to have a bunch of different options up your sleeve. It will just really breathe some life into the sound of your strumming. Now, one quick extra tip on strumming is a thing called a rake. It's kind of like, you know, like when you're going with an actual rake in the garden. Well, you can do that both ways, down or up kind of not really picking the notes individually and it's not really fully strumming. It's kind of in between. And in an upwards manner sounds good as well. Okay, so tip number six is actually quite a bit 
like the way that I'm talking. It's really good to just be versatile with playing songs at different speeds. Yes, each song will have its optimum tempo or speed, but it's just a really good exercise in being able to combat different speeds because it just forces your strumming hand to just play differently. So for instance, this will be a faster example. Or really slowly. Three, four. Okay, so we're churning through these steps right now. And so you may have noticed that lucky number seven that I'm just about to get into is actually got a lot to do with dynamics. What is dynamics? Dynamics is just what I was doing there with my voice. It just brings it up and brings it down, not necessarily in speed. I might have been incorporating speed with the way that I was talking there. It's basically just a volume. classic go-to for when to do that would be going softer in the verse and louder in the chorus. But, you know, mix and match. Try out a bunch of different ways. Now, a couple of other ways of being able to control dynamics in addition to just how hard or soft that you're using your pick or your plucking fingers. Uh, one is palm muting. So that's where you just get the edge of your palm and you just lightly touch the strings just close to the bridge and... Just do that in comparison to, that's what it would sound like without palm mutes. That's what it sounds like with palm mutes. And also if I'm strumming exactly the same volume, but just change the position, you know, way up the neck or way closer to the bridge, it will have different tonal qualities, which also adds to dynamics. So number eight is one of my favorite techniques. It's mimicking the drummer. Now, imagine the We Will Rock You drum beat, right? Or kick, kick, snare, kick, kick, snare. You know, the guitar can kind of mimic that in the strumming. So the lower boom, boom can be the lower areas of the strings, whereas the snare or the can be the higher areas. Another quick way you can mimic a drummer is by incorporating mutes, kind of like a drum fill. All right, that brings us to our second to last tip, which is using stops or rests. And so a really good place to do that is just before a chorus. Let's say we're about to go to a chorus now. Because let's face it, if you're playing with a lot of variation, but all of the variations are noise related, well then try adding some silence to vary it. Knock, knock. Who's there? Shh. Okay, so our tenth and final tip is using single notes or single strings in an arpeggiated fashion. And you can incorporate it with some strums. Oh, 
All right, so there's 10 different tips to add to your strumming hand with playing guitar chords. Now, I bet you you want to go and try mixing and matching, experimenting what a bunch of them will sound like together. Here's me just riffing off a few of them. Sounds pretty cool, huh, when you put them all together. Now, there's one thing that I didn't mention. So here is a bonus tip for you, for what it's worth. You know the little lick or riff in the song Zombie? Now, depending on the song you're playing, it might not have a riff or a lick in it that's that iconic or recognisable. But in this song, you really miss it. If you're playing and singing the song and you don't have that one little bit, well, then, to me, it's missing. So I would add it in. You notice I added in an open G here just to sort of fill out the sound a little bit more. Now, either way, just having that attention to detail, incorporating those iconic sounding riffs in songs it just really makes the song and i know it's got nothing to do with strumming necessarily but hey that's why it's a bonus tip so there you have it you've got your pre-tip your entree with the 10 main course tips and the bonus dessert tip there let me know in the comments below what was your number one thing that you got out of this video. And if you got a lot out of this video and you would like the opportunity to potentially hang out with me, go check out craftyguitarclub.com. It's an online guitar club membership which gets you a bunch of uploaded content and also the chance, like I said, to hang out with myself, ask me a bunch of questions and hang out with a bunch of other like-minded guitarists like yourself. So that sounds like something that you'd be interested in. There's heaps of info on craftyguitarclub.com. And of course, there is a bunch of wide range stuff here on the Crafty Music Tips music channel. So I hope that a bunch of those types of videos will be helpful for you as well. I think for this particular music tips video, I'm going to say sayonara. Wherever you are in your world, I hope that your guitar and your music is rocking. And I'll see you in another music tips video really soon. Take care.